Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. We will begin immediately following the Mishnah. The Mishnah had to discuss which halachos of the carbon Pesach push off Shabbos and which do not. The Gemara asks about the source altogether that Pesach pushes off the halachos of Shabbos. The Gemara relates a story on the subject and the Gemara takes it apart with five kashas on the story. Then the Gemara brings in some agarata at the end about what happens when somebody gets angry and he forgets his halachos. And the Gemara discusses afterwards halachos of bringing a carbon Pesach when the tzibor is tame. So first of all, the Gemara introduces the story. The Gemara says that Ben Pseira were the Nisim, and they forgot the halacha as to whether or not one is allowed to bring a carbon Pesach on Shabbos. Is Pesach Deicha, does it push away Shabbos or not? So the Gemara says they were Nisim, and one year it came out that Pesach fell, that Erev Pesach fell on Shabbos. They didn't know what to do, so they went around asking, does anybody know that halacha is a carbon Pesach allowed to be brought on Shabbos or not? So they were told, there's a fellow by the name of Hillel Abavli who comes from Bavel, and he was a Talmud of Shemayin of Italian to Gedele Yadar. He knows the halacha. They went to speak with him, and he said, do you know the halacha? He said, yes, I do happen to know the halacha. It's very clear. There are over 200 karbanas a year which are brought on Shabbos. What is he referring to? He's referring to every Shabbos. There is about 50 uh, Shabbosim a year. There is actually 52, but there are at least 50 Shabbosim a year. And the carbon Tamid and the carbon Musaf, there's two carbon Tamidim and two carbon Musafim, four karbanas per Shabbos that are brought. That's over 200 karbanas a year. Meaning he's saying if you can bring a carbon Tamid on Shabbos and a carbon Musaf on Shabbos, you could also bring a carbon Pesach on Shabbos. So the Gemara says... How do you know? So he says, because um, it says Moyadoi. The word Moyadoi appears by a carbon Tamid, and the word Moyadoi appears by the carbon Pesach. Just like Pesach, just like a carbon Tamid, you're allowed to bring on Shabbos, carbon Pesach, you're allowed to bring on Shabbos, connected by the Gzair Shav, the word Moyadoi. Or I could even tell you that it's not a Gzair Shav, it's Kavachimer. Pesach is stricter than uh Tamid. Somebody who, if if we forget to bring a carbon in the Tamid, there's no karis. But if you forget to bring a carbon in Pesach, that is karis. So it's even stricter, so it's a kav chomer. So he says it both as a gzeir shava and a kav chomer. The Gemara will have a number of questions on this whole exchange. Okay, the Gemara c- c- continues the story. The Gemara says that they immediately installed him as the head, as the roish, and um, he was saying shir. He sat all day and he was saying shir, and after a while, he, he so he taught the halachas of a Pesach, and then he started up with them, and he said, why are you people uh, in this situation where you had to appoint me to be in charge of you and to teach you these halachas, it's because you were lazy, you didn't go and learn from Shemayin of Italian, the two Gedele Hadar. As soon as it happened, they asked him, what is the halacha if somebody forgets to bring his knife? to the base of Migdash, and he can't do Shechita, and if he gets to bring it on Shabbos, is he, is he, and he's not allowed to carry it on Shabbos, what's he supposed to do? Um, and over here, Rashi explains, it wouldn't be any hatter to carry it, because he could have brought it before Shabbos. So he says, oh, this Allah I learned, and I forgot. I forgot. So, but they leave it to Kaius, so if they're not Nevi'im, then they are the children of Nevi'im, and they'll figure out what to do. Well, the next day was Shabbos, and it was Erev Pesach, and as it happened, some people forgot to bring their knives, so what did they do? They stuck the knife on the animal so that the animal carried it instead of them. The Gemara will, of course, discuss some halachic problems involved with that. Now, how did they manage to um, bring the knife? So if their carbon was a lamb, which has wool, it has a lot of thick wool, then they were able to do it by, by lodging the knife in the hair in the wool. If it was a goat that has very short hair and it couldn't stick it in the hair, then they did it by wedging it between the horns. Well, when he saw that, he said, yes, I remember that this is the halacha, this is what Shemayin Avitalian said, this is what you do, you're supposed to have the animal carry it for you. Okay, now that Gemara breaks down this story with five kashas on it. First of all, we learned, we said that the limud, the way you know that you're allowed to bring a carbon Pesach on Shabbos and that it pushes away the halachas of Shabbos is learning out of a carbon Tamid. Well, says the Gemara, how do you know that a carbon Tamid you're allowed to bring on Shabbos? Who said? So Gemara first wants to say, well, maybe it says Mayadai in its time, whatever the time is, whether it's Shabbos or it's a weekday. Gemara says that can't be because it says Mayadai by Pesach and he didn't want to say that that was enough of a proof that you're allowed to bring a carbon Pesach on Shabbos, obviously the word Mayadai itself does not indicate that you can bring it on Shabbos. What then is your proof? So the Gemara says, well, um, it must be because it says, when it describes the carbon Musaf on Shabbos, it says, Oilas Shabbos Bishabbatoi. You're allowed to bring your carbon Oila Musaf on Shabbos, Alalas Atomid, on top of the Oila, which is a Tomid. So you see, you're allowed to bring the carbon Tomid, if you're. Where, 
we're saying you're going to bring the carbon Musaf besides for the carbon Tamad on Shabbos. Obviously, you're allowed to bring the carbon Tamad on Shabbos. Okay, Gemara's next question is why did we need both a Kavachimer and a Gezeira Shava? First of all, there's a problem with the Kavachimer, the Gemara says. The Kavachimer, we said, was that uh, carbon Pesach has Karis, and a carbon Tamad doesn't have Karis. So if you're allowed to bring a carbon Tamad, you're certainly allowed to bring a carbon Pesach. Gemara says, not necessarily. Carbon and Tamad is stronger in some ways. First of all, it's burned up completely. It's an Oila, which is burned completely, which a carbon Pesach is not. And second of all, it's Tadir. You bring it every day, and therefore it has a certain Chashiva, it has a certain importance that a carbon Pesach does not have. So the Gemara says, yes, this is what they, this is what the the, uh, the Nesim said back to Hillel, and they rejected his Kavachimer. And that's why he, he had actually said the Kavachimer first. And that's why he had to bring in the Gzeir So the Gemara says, hold on a second. If he had a Gzeir in his pocket the whole time, why did he bother with the Kavachimer? So the Gemara says he was telling them like this, Gzeir you can't say on your own. So you people who didn't learn from Shemayin of Italian, you didn't hear the Allah, I understand why you couldn't say the Gzeir Shavu, because you're not allowed to say it on your own. But why don't you figure out the Kavachimer? So then they had said to him, the Kavachimer has a pirch on it. You can reject the Kavachimer. It's not a good Kavachimer because there is something special about the carbon Tumman which may give reason for it to be brought on Shabbos that a carbon Pesach cannot be. And then that he said, okay, so for that you have to rely on the Gzeir Shavah, and that is what I did from, from Shmai and Avi. Italian have Gzeir Shavah from the word Mayid, Mayid, from Tumman to carbon Pesach. Okay, now the Gemara goes on to its third question. Um, we had said that the way they were allowed to bring their knives was by sticking it in the horns or the wool of the carbon. Gemara says, but you're doing a vayda. You're, you're having your carbon of kachim work for you. How are you allowed to have kabbanis work? An animal which is kachim is not allowed to do work for you. So the Gemara says they did like Hillel. Hillel never had any problem of people using me'ila, of people doing me'ila, using their karbonas in his time, because he advised people, don't be makdish, do not sanctify your animals as karbonas until you're in the base of Mikdish and you're ready to bring them. Don't do it well in advance, so you'll have karbonas running around. Like this, you don't have any karbonas problems. So what these people did was that they didn't, they weren't makdish their animal yet, they were only makdish it when they got to the base of Mikdish after they had already brought the knife. So when it was carrying the knife, it wasn't a carbon, it wasn't hektish, it wasn't mukdash yet. So the Gemara says, but what do you mean? You're not allowed to make an animal hektish and Shabbos. So how were they able to be makdish the animal when they got to the base of makdish and Shabbos? It says in the Mishnah, a makdishin, a marichin, a machrim, a magbiin, truma umaisis. You're not allowed to do any of those things on Yontif. All those things are lifting up from a mundane status to a hektish, whether it's truma or karbonis or erchin or cherim, all these things. So you're not allowed to do that. So how are they allowed to do it on Shabbos. You might answer, you're not allowed to do that. That's things that you're not going to end up using. You're not stuck to a set time that it has to be brought on Shabbos. Either karbonis that aren't going to be brought on Shabbos or things which you don't have to be makdish on Shabbos. Then you're not allowed to be makdish on Shabbos. A carbon that has to be brought on Shabbos itself, then you're allowed to be makdish on Shabbos itself. That's part of the hakrava process. You're allowed to do that hakrava. Um, next, the Gemara's question, fourth is how are they allowed to have the animals carry on Shabbos, and your animal is not allowed to carry for you on Shabbos. It's Isra Machamer, an animal is not allowed to do work for you on Shabbos. So Gemara says it, is, it was not the normal way of carrying. It wasn't carrying it in a normal way that you have an animal saddled up and doing work. It was wedged in its hair or between its horns. It's not called carrying. It's Kalach Aryad. Gemara says, Kalach Aryad, it's not an Isidai, right? So it's still has a Darabonon. Gemara says, yeah, well, that was a question. That was why they asked him, are we allowed to do this or not? They wanted to know, are you allowed to do an Isidai Darabonon in order to be able to perform the mitzvah of bringing the Karman Pesach? We're not allowed to do that, and that is what he forgot. Okay, now the Gemara goes into some Musa over here. The Gemara says there are two types of people who will lose their high status and two or three types of high status that they will lose. Neyar as follows. Somebody who is misyoher, somebody is yor, somebody who is boastful, well, uh, if he's a chacham, he loses his learning, and if he's a navi, he loses his nevuah. Where do we see that? So Hillel, our story here is an example of a chacham who lost his learning because he, he began to start up with them and said, because you guys were lazy, that's why you don't know. Um, and that's why he forgot right afterwards, he forgot to lacha, what happens if you forgot to bring the knife, you'll have to carry the knife or not. Where do you see that with uh, Nabi who loses Navua, that's Devaira, Devaira Hanavia. It says that she was a little bit haughty over the Tamid Chacham, the leaders of the time. Like the Pasik says, Chadu Perazin Bi Israel, Chadelu Ad Shakamti Devaira, Shakamti Im Bi Israel. And she was saying, There isn't anybody else, there was no leader until our mother in Israel got up, until Devaira. That was not so respectful to the other leaders of the time. And we find later. Uh, five psukim after that it says Uri Uri Devaira Uri Uri Dabri Shir Wake up Devaira Wake up Say uh, Shira That means that she needed to wake up Because she lost her Nevoa Up till that mm, point Okay Now the Gemara says That somebody who becomes angry If he's a Chacham He loses his Chachma And if he's a Navi He loses his Nevoa And the Gemara later adds And if he is 
to test him for greatness, he will lose his uh, greatness. What are the examples of this? So the Chacham who, lo- the, the chacham who loses his Chachma is Moshe, who got angry at the Pekudia Achayel, the generals of the war against Midian, and he was upset with them, and then he lost Alacha. And we see that right afterwards, Elazar Hakayin said that Allah says Chol because the Torah says Siva Hashem that Moshe forgot the halacha right then. Where do you see that a navi loses nevuah from Elisha? Elisha got upset at Yehoram, and he said Luli Pnei Yishav and Melch Yehuda, and no, you see, if not for Yishav, the king of Yehuda here, Im Abed Elacha Vemareka, I wouldn't look at you, I wouldn't see you, and he was upset at Yehoram, and then he lost his nevuah because it's afterwards Vatak Chuli Menagin Vayik Menagin Menagin. He had to bring some musician to restore him to a place of simcha, and that he wouldn't have that anger. In order that it should be, as the pasuk says, afterwards, vatehi alav yad Hashem, then Hashem will restore his hand to him, meaning he had lost his nevo, he lost his yad Hashem afterwards. Now, where do you see Gedula? So that is Eliav. Eliav is the brother of David Hamelach. The Navi relates that when Kaiso was having war against Pelishtim and they were facing off against Goliath, and nobody was willing to challenge him, so Yishai, the father of Eliav. And David had sent David to the front to bring them some messages and some supplies. When David heard that Goliath was taunting Yisrael and nobody was willing to challenge him, he said, I'll challenge him. And Eliav, who was the oldest of his brothers, and he was a tall, powerful soldier, he got upset at him and he said, what are you doing? You just came here to watch the war and to have fun. And he was upset at him. And we shall see that Eliav was really the one who was destined to become king, but HaKadosh Baruch Hu took it away because of this Midah of anger. Where do you see that? Because when Shmuel Anabi came to Yishai's house and he was told that one of the sons of Yishai is supposed to be the king, he checked all the sons and the last one he saw was David, all the other ones he rejected first. So it says they all came one by one, and Hashem said, Lebozet, 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 not this one, not this one, not this one, which implies that none of them were ever supposed to be, but then when it came to Eliav, he says, don't look at how tall and how beautiful he is, Ki Masasiv, because I have rejected him from being the king, Masasihu. That implies that until a certain point he was supposed to be the king, but he was rejected. When was that? When he showed this trait of anger, he was rejected from being the king. Okay, and the Gemara now moves on to the Halacha of Tumah, we know that a carbon Pesach, a single person who is Tame is not allowed to bring a carbon Pesach, but a group, if the entire group, the whole Tzibor is Tame, then they're all allowed to bring the carbon Betuma. The Gemara says the same halacha applies to the carbon Tamid, and the Gemara wants to know how do you know. So the Gemara says, well, we learned that you're allowed to bring our Shabbos, we learn Pesach out of Tamid. You're allowed to bring Betuma if everybody is a Tame, we learn Tamid out of Pesach. And how do you know that the carbon Pesach you're allowed to bring if everybody is a Tame? So the Gemara tries a couple of sources to hear. The Gemara first of all says that the Pasha which describes the Pesach Sheni, that people who are Tomei by the first opportunity on Erev Pesach have a second opportunity in the month of Eor to bring a carbon Pesach. And there it says, Ish Ish ki ye tomei A man who will be Tomei. Only a single person has to wait till Pesach Sheni if he's Tomei, but a group could bring it right away in Pesach Rishon. So Gemara says, Mishlakesh asks, Rabbi Echanan, how do you know that a group has a... Re- that the group is different than an individual in the sense that the individual has to wait to Pesach Sheni and the group could do it right away. Maybe the group can't do it even Pesach Sheni. Maybe the group is worse. They can't do it Pesach Rishon or Pesach Sheni. So therefore he says they have to have a different source. And the source is as follows. The Pasuk describes people who are sent out of the campuses of Yishach Ben Amachara, called Tzirua, called Zav, called Tamil and Nefesh. Somebody has Taras, somebody who's a Zav, that's a Tamil that comes from, flows from the body, or somebody who's Tamil Nefesh who touched a dead person. That's the Tamil we are talking about here. So the Gemara says, a tummy mace is the um, lightest of these three tumas. The order of these tumas are from worst to lightest. They are Tsaras, Zav, and Tme Mace. So if you would just say that a Tame Mace has to be sent out of the camp, I would know that everybody else has to be sent out of the camp as well. Why do you have to list all three? Must be that you couldn't say Tame Mace, because there's some times that a Tame Mace gets to stay in the camp and everybody else has to be sent out. When's that? Ah, Carbon Pesach. Carbon Pesach, where the entire group is Tame, you have to send everybody else out. Abaye asks, hold on a second, there are three levels here. Matsura is the worst Tama, Zav is middle, and uh, Tame Mace, when it touch the dead, is the lightest. So you've proven to me that Tame Mace, y- y- the, from the fact that we didn't say Tame Mace, and I know all the other ones have to be sent out of the camp, that sometimes Tame Mace doesn't have to be sent out of the camp. But why don't you just tell me that a Zav has to be sent out of the camp, and then I'll know that Matsura has to be sent out of the camp. By your logic, that would imply that sometimes a Zav could stay in the camp, and only Matsura has to be sent out. That's why we have to list uh, Zav separate. That's why we, we have to list Matsura separately. We couldn't just say Zav and I'll know Matsura. 
Well, that would seem to indicate, according to your logic, that sometimes the mitzayr gets to eat from the the zav gets to eat from a carbon pesach. If everybody's a zav, they all get to eat from the carbon pesach, just like if everybody's a tamei meis, they all get the right. But that is not true. Under no circumstances is a zav allowed to eat from a carbon pesach. And Abayah brings a mishnah. The mishnah says that a group of tamei meisim are allowed to bring, but zav and zavis need this yodais. They are not allowed to eat from a carbon pesach under any circumstances. And the Gemara therefore uh, rejects this. And Abayah is going to go back to the other pasuk, and that will be on Daf. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzchak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.